Hello, good morning everyone. Lovely to have you all back again. I think from the messages <laughs> you've missed us. Um, as you might know, we've got our new schedule. So this is the first Facebook Live uh, since Wednesday. Um, but for those of you who joined us for the Thursday night bead club and the Friday morning bead club, we had so much fun. It was lovely to see you all there, really busy classes. Um, and some fabulous feeders in there. They had uh, some amazing projects. Um, so just uh, so that you know, obviously it's Remembrance Sunday um, and at 11 o'clock there will be the two minute silence. So I'm gonna um, do my best uh, to finish before then. So we'll probably be about 40 minutes or so, uh, so that for those of you who want to go and partake in that, you're not gonna be stuck here with me. We're gonna make sure that we're done. So it's a bit hard, isn't it? Without all the ceremonies going on and everything. So we are going to be able to do that. Um, oh, Maxine, you've just reminded me. Uh, did you announce Beader of the Month in October? Uh, please do let us know in case I've missed it. Do you know what I will do? I will put a post on. Um, we did select our Maker of the Month in the Totally Beads group and now the name has completely eluded me. So what I will do is um, put a post up in the Totally Handmade group today. As you know, we pick a Maker of the Month um, and that Maker of the Month will receive a £30 voucher for the website. So I will sort that out today for you, Maxime. It's been a busy old week and that one has escaped me. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, so have you been busy? Hope you're all okay on your first week of new lockdown. Uh, good morning, Rachel. Hi, Jan. Hi, Lucy. She says, I missed you all. We missed you too. Good morning, Camille. Hi, Maxine. Good morning, Edward. Sarah and everyone, I'm looking forward to making the beaded holly. You've got everything ready to go. Amazing. So you're going to bead along with me, Edward. I love it. Um, so yes, we do have uh, kits available. So what I'm going to do is today I'm gonna to show you the holly, and then tomorrow morning you're stuck with me again at 10 o'clock, and I'm gonna show you the mistletoe. Um, Kitty's got lots on her plate, so um, I'm gonna take over tomorrow. Um, okay, so beaded holly, these are the sprigs that we're going to be making today. Uh, the kits that I've got available on the website, I'll show you in a sec, um, but it's for the holly and the mistletoe. Um, I can see that a lot of you already have the kit, so we have done these before. Um, we've had them on telly as well, um, on Create and Craft TV. So the mistletoe that we're gonna be doing tomorrow gorgeous sprigs of mistletoe. Um, you can make them in all different shapes and sizes. You can bring them together to make gorgeous little sprigs that you can hang up in the home or have on your wreath. Um, the wreath that I'm, this is work in progress. Um, this is gonna be my festive wreath now that the pumpkins are done. I've taken those down and my autumn wreath. Um, so these holly and mistletoe sprigs are gonna be to go into here. Um, you can also change them into brooches uh, so you can very easily wire wrap them onto brooches and you can do smaller ones, well, unless you want to go all out, um, and have them as earrings as well. So with the wire wrapping, I'll show you at what point in the project you could actually then transfer it into jewellery. Uh, Katrina's asking what level of difficulty. Um, I would say they're beginners. I would say they're easy. Um, the techniques I'm going to show you are tradi traditional French beading techniques. Um, so we are going to do the holly with the uh, spokes which will look like this um, because going forward and as we move into next year and everything else there's new flowers new new um branches new foliage and everything else that i want to teach you in the french beading so we're going to nail in some of those techniques so that we know what we're doing um okay so i'm going to show you the website first of all just so that if you want to grab hold of your goodies then you can um so just as usual uh, when you go on to totallybeads.co.uk, you will have the homepage pop up. Lots of things going on here. Uh, categories, we're going to go down to Facebook tutorials. This will give you everything that we are doing in the Facebook tutorials. For those of you who are asking about Bead Club, uh, that is actually running on a different website. So that is beadclub.co.uk. But on the Totally Beads website is where you will find all of your kits for our lives. Uh, so these are the holly kits. So we've got beaded, mistletoe and holly. So not only is it your kit for today, it's also your kit for tomorrow. Um, £14.99 down to £13.50. Nice little saving there as well. It's going to allow you to create up to 20 sprigs. So when we are saying these are kind of mass makes and you can use them in the wreaths or on the trees and garlands and all sorts of things and your jewellery, you're going to be making plenty. You're going to get your wire, your seed beads, your glass beads and your red and your white for the holly uh, 
beads and then also the mistletoe beads and your floristry tape as well. So I'm going to show you how to wrap. Now, if you don't have a seed bead spinner already, uh, there's hopefully something for every budget. The wooden one is $17.99, but the mini one is $3.99. Um, they are fantastic. Lifesaver, I'm going to show you that now. Complete game changer when it comes to seed beads. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we've got the wire. 0.4 millimeter you can choose between either 20 meters which is three pound fifty uh you're actually going to get um 20 meters of it it's 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge if you are in the us um and that's a fantastic uh huge big bundle i'm going to show you that in a moment or 50 meters uh 55 meters sorry so you're 20 or 50 meters 50 meters are seven pound fifty and they come on one spool. I know the picture shows you three, but they come on one. Okay, so I think that's everything that we need. That's all the uh, that's all the admin out of the way. Let's get beaded. Okay, so I'm going to turn you down. Not on that one, that one. I'm going to turn you down and we'll have a little look. Now, this is a bead spinner. So I've put my beads into the tray. Um, this one is the wooden one. So it actually has like a little rod through the center and the tray then sits on the top. I'm using my um, 0.4 millimeter, 20 meters, and it's in green. And then I've... Um, opened up some of my wire I've just put it into the little slot to hold it into place to stop any of that unraveling and I'm going to bead straight onto my wire so with the bead spinners you can use it with your thread you can actually even spin directly onto memory wire uh, if you're using small enough beads um, but they always come with a needle and it's got a hook eye on it uh, so like a little fish hook so what I'm going to do is take my wire I've just straightened all of this out by running it through my fingers and then I'm just going to bend it around my index finger just to give me that little hook so just like a fish hook oh Sue says I hope the first bead club went well it did thank you um I popped into both of them just to say hello to everybody um but they were having great fun it was all very good thank you um so fish hook because I want the beads coming into contact with the very end of this now if I didn't have a bead spinner I wouldn't actually have the time to do much French bead French beading um, because it is quite with these ones it's not too time costly um, because uh, we we don't need many beads for our sprigs but when you get into things like uh, we've been we've been doing orchids before uh, we're doing poinsettias in bead club in a couple of weeks um, there's some really big flowers uh, especially the rose as well where you do need a lot of beads so for something like this it's fantastic so my hook is going to go into the well of the spinner and I'm just going to kind of rest it on top of the beads and slightly push it in so because I'm right-handed my needle is in my right and I'm going to spin anti-clockwise if you were left-handed hold it the other way around and spin clockwise so as you can see as if by magic as soon as I put my wire into the tray look at how many beads I've picked up and that's a few seconds so this actually means that I don't have to pick them up individually from my bead mat and what I do is I hold the wire almost like a pen in my fingers and as you can see, this is making my prep time so minimal. Um, and I'm just popping them straight in, loading them up. Now, with your bead spinners, you can go up to anything, depending on the material that you are threading onto. So, for example, if you're doing your memory wire, um, you can even use it for size 8s. 6s are a little bit big. Um, but you can do this for your 11s, your 15s, these ones are 12s, these are our FGB beads. Um, and as you can see, it cuts down at my prep time by so much. Okay, so now that I'm prepped, obviously if you don't have a bead spinner, oh, Jane says, oh wow, I love it, I've never seen a bead spinner before, will be purchasing. They are fabulous. Um, like I said, if I didn't have them, um, there's no way I would be able to have the time to sit down and prep them. So just within a few seconds, you can see the volume of beads that I've picked up, which are brilliant. Um, good morning, Simon. He's also just putting up some links uh, for all of the seed beads. So if you want any of your size 12 seed beads, these are our FGB seed beads. Um, as I like to call them, they're our middle class bead. 
Uh, so they're not quite the posh, posh, posh Japanese ones, but they aren't your cheaper Chinese craft beads either. They are fantastic. Um, oh, Geraldine says, um, Sarah, did you make your poppy? It's cute. Thank you. No, these are the ones from Craft Buddy Crystal Art um, that they launched. I believe they've all sold out, um, but they made a fabulous donation uh, for all of the sales as well. Um, okay, so... What I'm going to do now is uh, actually start the very middle of our holly and at this point where we are creating this spine it's going to give you the very centre row of your holly. So if I show you the finished ones here it's up to you how big or how small you want to make your holly and this starting row will give you the length of it. So what we are doing is this very middle spine running through here and then you need to remember that it's going to grow a little bit as well so i reckon we'll go for i've got 16 here which is quite big um it's probably yeah ever so slightly smaller than the sprig that i've got here so we're going to do that um and i'll show you as we go how you can make smaller ones if we get time we'll do another little one as well so my wire up at the top here, if you want to, you can actually put a little loop or a little knot on there. Um, we're going to put the beads on into the center and I'm going to leave myself a couple of inches up at the top and then I'm going to take my wire. So my wire is prepped with all my beads and it's still on the spool. So I'm working from the spool and I've just moved those beads, the remaining beads down a little bit. I'm going to give myself a little loop here. So I'm going to bring up the wire hold it at the base like so and then remember obviously I've got my little tail here so my beads don't fall off and then I'm going to create just a couple of little loops and I like to put my fingers into the hole spread it open and twist it like so and that way because I'm opening that hole and spreading open my fingers all of my loops are transferring up to the top all of my twists this will become our stem Okay, so this is our center. And because I've been holding that in my hands, I'm just gonna straighten it up a little bit. And then we're gonna start bringing up some beads. Now, first of all, we're actually gonna do, I like to do a couple of little rows in the middle. It's gonna fill in some of the gaps. Because I'm right-handed, my beads are coming in from the right. So I'm just gonna rotate and flip my work so that I'm always working on my right-hand side. And these beads are gonna come up and hook around that very center spine. And you can keep on straightening them up just to make sure you've got the right amount. I don't ever count the beads with French beading. Um, when I've taught these in classes, a lot of people do start to count them. And by the time you've done one or two rows or one sprig, you, you realize that it's irrelevant. Um, you don't bother counting them anymore. So I want this wire and the beads to come up and hook over. I'm gonna take away just one bead so that I am a little bit closer. And so as you can see, it's gonna hook up and over that very center spine. And then this is where we're gonna do our pointed tip. So. There are many different techniques. You can do rounded petals, you can do pointed petals. So with the holly, of course, it's pointed. Uh, this would be the same for things like daisies, sunflowers, um, what else, lilies, all this kind of thing. So those pointed petal shapes. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my wire over the very top of my spine and I'm gonna ask you to imagine a clock face because it's the easiest way to do it. So my wire, which is over the top, is going to sit at two o'clock and then we're going to take it around the back of the wire and we're going to place it at 10 o'clock like so and then we're going to diagonally cross over to four o'clock and what that will do is give me a point so it's sharp angles so we're going two o'clock to ten o'clock to four o'clock okay and that's how you get the um that's how you get the point and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'm going to bring up those beads because they're already pre-prepped. I'm going to rotate it around. And again, I'm working on my right-hand side. So all my beads are coming in and around the left. And you just want to make sure that you fill that gap. So you can see I'm sitting them nice and close so that it comes up and over. And then I'm going to go two, ten, four. And we'll straighten all of this up. And this is giving us the very center. Okay, now for our holly, we now want to make the little spokes. 
So what I'm going to do is bring up probably only about five beads. Maybe let's go six. And I'm bringing them up to the edge. And then I'm going to create a little loop. So I'm bringing the wire up and we're doing exactly the same thing as we did to make our little stem at the beginning. You can see this little spoke that's coming out. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing again. Bring up about the same amount of beads, five-ish. I'm going to go a little bit more just to get them to the little edge. And then we'll do the same thing again, bringing up some excess wire, holding these together and giving that a nice little twist. So you can bring your finger in and twist it around. And you want to make sure that you don't have any gap in between the beads. So you can see I had a little gap there. Sarah, is that before or after the clock's changed? <laughs> oh, kitty. <laughs> What was three o'clock is now two o'clock. Uh, so you can see now I've got that little spoke on the outside as well, like so. And then we're gonna bring up the beads to fill in that gap to take us up to the top. So it's all really done by eye. And I'm gonna take it up so that we get that lovely shape on the side. So two, 10, over the top, down to four. And then we'll do the same thing so we can mirror this side. So you want roughly the same amount of beads. And again, I'm gonna rotate my work. Always try and have your beads so that they are falling down with gravity. If I'm working down this side, you can see because the beads are gonna fall with gravity, it's gonna give me gaps. So I always make sure that I'm beading upwards. So we're going to take these ones down here, create a nice little spoke, holding those beads nice and close down, putting my fingers in so that that twist is right down at my beads, like so, and then we'll repeat the others as well. So try and go for about the same sort of bead count, but again, it's done by eye, it really doesn't matter bringing up some of that excess wire, creating our little loop, holding that in there. So you can see it is a nice pattern repeat as well. So as you start, the first one might look a little bit dodge. It's absolutely fine. You are going to get better and better at it. Okay, so there are my spokes. I'm just going to twist this one around a bit more because I've got a little gap in between those beads, which I don't want. There we go. And then I'm gonna bring up the rest of the beads to bring it into the base. So I do, you can see I'm pulling it down because if it's very far out, you're gonna have a huge big gap. I'm pulling it down just to tighten that up a little bit. And you can see already we're beginning to achieve that holly shape. So bringing it down, to the base, making sure those beads are filling it all in and coming around. Now you can do a pointed top and bottom of your holly. Uh, you can see that I'm not, I'm never too fussed about the bottom because um, I'm going to cover it with the beads anyway, so the berries, uh, so it doesn't really matter. But if you wanted to do a pointed bottom as well, you'll do your two, your 10 and your four. Uh, whereas here, all I'm doing is taking the wire and I'm just horizontally, so again, clock face, three to nine, and bringing it all the way around horizontally. So it's entirely up to you. Okay, so bringing this down. Again, rotating my work so that gravity is pulling them down. And now I'm gonna take it up to the little spoke that we've created. So enough beads to come and join my spoke and then I'm gonna wrap it around. And again, I'm gonna make it pointed. So I am gonna do my 10, uh, sorry, my two, my 10 and my four. Again, bringing them in to fill that gap. Two, wrap around the back, 10, around the front, four. And bringing it up to the top. Two, 
wire is around the front, get in there, two, around the back, ten, over the front, four. And so you can see now, all I'm doing is filling in the gap so I just have enough beads to take me to the little spoke that I have created. So not counting because each one of them is going to be ever so slightly different. And down to the bottom. And again, I'm just going to go horizontally around because I'm not too fussed. I think we're going to go one more. Let's go three rows. And so I've got to almost the end of my wire. I don't have loads left, so I haven't got loads of gap in between my beads on the spool and my stem. So I'm just going to unravel a little bit more wire so I've got that movement. And then when you get to it, just seal that off into the little groove of your wire. That's going to stop me losing it all. Because there's 20 metres on there and I don't want that unravelling. And we'll do one more row. So because I have pre-loaded my beads, it makes it so nice and quick and simple to do. Because all you're doing is allowing those beads to fall up. And again, making sure now that I'm not holding the beads up so I don't have any gaps. And wrapping them around and when you get into the process of it and you get into the the movement and you know what you're doing it's so therapeutic just to sit there you've got everything preloaded it's very similar to sort of crocheting or knitting you can just sit there and your hands are busy you don't need to be picking up lots of tools or your needles so to seal off this bottom I'm just going to wrap this wire all the way around and my wire cutters are in the conservatory from yesterday. So let me just, sorry, one sec. Ugh. Let me just grab another pair of cutters. Seems me running out there. I've been, um, We've been celebrating uh, this weekend because my stepdaughter's 16 on uh, on Wednesday and of course she's got a rubbish lockdown birthday. Um, so we were decorating the conservatory with all balloons and lights and all sorts. So I was using my cutters for that yesterday. Okay, so as you can see, we're almost looking like Holly. Now to finish off our French beading, what we're going to do is actually cut... Gosh, these are bad cutters. Now, you know we always say don't use your cutters for your memory wire um, because you will dent the the actual blade this is what happens you see all those little rivets all those little dips in the center so now if I have wire sit in any of these it's not going to cut that's what you end up doing when you ruin things um, these are actually my teaching box so I think they are um they're the sacrifice every lesson i used to used to say to them look don't do it this is what will happen okay so we've cut that stem so this will become the stem of our holly up at the top <laughs> jack says blimey 16 last time i heard she was 12. yeah she just keeps growing <laughs> So I've cut off the very top. I'm also going to cut and leave a tail of these little ones as well. And you just want to make sure that your twists are tight enough that they are all going to hold. So if you have very loose twists, just tighten them up and you can do that by, oh no, going the wrong way, don't undo it. Uh, you can do that by just tightening them up by keep on twisting. You see like this? so that you know you have lovely, nice, tight twists that aren't going to undo. And I've probably got about three twists I'm leaving as my little tails on the edges, like so. And then we're going to take our flat nose pliers and we're just going to bend those around the back of the leaf. Now you can always tell the front and the back because this is the front, as you can see, it's quite neat. When I turn it over at the back, you can actually see all of my wire working. So you can see the wire, the spine runs through the middle, that's how you know the back 
and the front. The front is a lot prettier and you will only have the beads visible. So I'm going to bend all of these over that top that's going to keep our nice point over on the sides and you'll see I'm taking the flat nose pliers right down to my beads and popping it in. And now this is the fun bit. So many times when I've taught people they've looked at it and gone this looks nothing like a holly leaf, this is abstract. It all comes in the form when you shape it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pinch it together and I'm going to take my finger and slightly raise and lift all of my little sections which will just accentuate the little spokes. So can you see that? By slightly lifting it, so I've raised this little section and poked it in and that's going to give me a really lovely holly shape, like so. So when you look at that from the side, you can see how I've just put my little finger in there. And again, up at the top. So I like to pinch these ones together, raise it all up. And now we are starting to look like holly. Okay, so we've got this one. Let's do another one because we do have time. Oh, heck. Hold on, laptop's going to die. Let's pop that one in. Right, got you. Saved your life. Okay, so I'm going to prep a few more beads. So opening up this wire. Let's spin a few more on. So for those of you who missed at the beginning, in we go. Nice little hook on the end. Spinning it around, prepping and picking up a few more of those beads. Now you see those ones that are jumping out. It's because I'm spinning a little bit fast. Just slow that speed down. And if you find that your beads do not travel up the wire, change the angle. So again, when I've taught and I've had you physically with me, um, you can see sometimes that people will spin and they're not going up and I'll just come along and I will just slightly alter the hand direction uh, or angle. So you've got the wire coming in. Let me just put me up full screen a sec so you can see it. You'll have the wire coming in like this. What you want is for it to be almost horizontal so that that hook but now you can see that the hook is facing down into the beads. Slight little rotation on that. And what you really want is the hook and your main wire to run parallel because that is gonna make it easier for obviously the beads to travel. Okay, so all those slight little tweaks and slight little movements will make the world of difference, I promise you. And then just prep as many beads as you want, really. Um, if I've been French beading before, I tend to um, almost, almost bead the whole spool. Um, or until I've got, you know, not many beads in my trays. If you're going for the mini spinner, which is $3.99, the link will be in the description of the video. If you're going for the mini one, you can even pour 10 grams of beads into those. If you are going for the larger, I would suggest no less than 20 grams. Got to think about it, it's a numbers game. So you're going to need that volume of beads to make sure that you are striking enough of them that they come up the wire. Okay, so let's go from the very beginning. My first beads, and I'm going to make this one roughly about the same size. So a few inches from the top, leaving me that nice tail bringing up the wire which is going to give me my stem. Fingers in the loop, spread that open. So fingers in, open it up and twist. By opening up your fingers, it's transferring all of my twists up to the top. Whereas if I was to sit and do this, it's going to give me loose ones. Okay, so open it up, twist it round. That's going to give me my stem. We'll straighten this bit up. We're going to go for... Some surrounding beads first because that fills in our nice little gaps bringing those beads up and I'm transferring it flipping it around transferring the beads to the left so that I'm always working on the right bringing up enough beads so that I am just crossing over that very top bead 
and my wire is around the front. So over the top, two o'clock. Around the back, 10 o'clock. Cross over the front, four o'clock. And that is gonna give me that beautiful point. So allowing those beads, or oh, look at that point. Perfect finish. Turning it over so that my beads are then weighing down with gravity so I've got no gaps up here and just a rounded bottom all the way horizontally along. Okay, now we're going to go for our spokes. So again, turning it around, my first one will go about there. So you're basically cutting it into threes. So one and two there, so that will give me one, two and three sections. Bringing up a little bit of that wire, bringing it and holding it in as close to the beads as I can because I don't want there to be any gap. So I'm twisting right into the tip of those beads. Gaps in your beading are what will give you um, a little bit of a messier finish. So you want it to be nice and neat. Next section, so I'm pulling that up to bring those beads in nice and close. Next section, so my second third. Bit of extra wire. Making my next spoke. Bringing it as close to the beads as I can. Bringing up my next beads. Pulling it nice and tight to fill in those little gaps. Yes, Camille, it's the quarantine rounded bottom, isn't it? <laughs> We've all got one now. <laughs> um, up to the top, around the front, two o'clock, around the back, 10 o'clock, crossing over the front, four o'clock. And again, the next beads. Mirroring my spokes on this side. So I want roughly the same amount of beads, cutting it into my third, bringing up some extra wire. Got a bit much there, but hey ho, doesn't matter. Making sure those twists are right up to my beads. Next third, pulling it in a little bit tighter. Bringing up that spare wire. Edward, how are you getting on? You're beading away with me, aren't you? I hope you're doing okay. Um, if anybody else has any questions, if you're doing it with me, then let me know. Bringing this round. And then my last beads for the bottom. As you can see, I've got, looks a bit like a sort of turtle, doesn't it? Those little legs bringing it up to the top and again I'm not worried about doing it pointed but you could do it pointed here for sure if you wanted to um, so two ten four and then we're just going to fill in and we'll do three rows of these lovely beads I'm just going to straighten out some of this wire because I'm getting in, a, getting in a little pickle so make sure that those spokes are all nicely in position wire up to there so filling in those beads and this is where you can just have a little play if I took one away can I pull it in tight enough that there would be no gaps if I add in that one more is it slightly too big that it actually creates a gap and bulks out so have a little play to be honest with you the end result you 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 might kind of procrastinate and sit on it for a little while and think right well you know should I do this should I do that should I play with them you can do that for ages by the time you form it I promise you it really won't make much of a difference so you can overthink these um remember we are trying to kind of replicate nature with this um which is uh, you know an impossible task anyway uh, if they aren't perfect, it really doesn't matter. Um, so many of you will be used to, and this is where Kitty struggles with this a little bit, because she's so used to uniformity, um, precise beading, um, bead weaving. So when it comes to things like this, um, she wants the same results. 
and with wire and the beads it doesn't always have to be absolutely perfect there are other ways that you can do these and i will show you we can even do some peyote holly if you would like that will give you um a neater kind of more precise finish um but it does take longer obviously uh, with these you can pretty much form them in um, just a few minutes so obviously i'm taking a bit longer because i I'm talking to you guys. Uh, Edward, I'm having a bit of fun trying to do it. Oh, good stuff. Um, do post your pictures in the Totally Handmade group afterwards. And then if anyone's got any questions or if anyone gets stuck on anything, remember we are also doing our mistletoe tomorrow. So Holly today, mistletoe tomorrow. Uh, then we can have a little look. Um, okay, so cutting off, I've just rounded uh, the base. I'm going to pop a little knot on the end of this wire. It shows you how pliable and manageable the wire is. I'm just going to put a little knot on there so that I don't have to lose any of these. Trust me, you'll only ever let it happen once. And they fly everywhere. Uh, yes, let's do peyote holly, says Nadia. Okay, I'm going to add it on my list. Um, looking forward to seeing the picture in due course. Lovely. Uh, I'm doing some beaded beads while watching you. Lovely Kitty had a, those on the other day, didn't she? Uh, question, could you make animals this way? You mentioned turtle. Christopher might have some inspirational ideas to go with his button men. Indeed he might. Well, I'm pretty sure you could turn that into a little turtle or something, couldn't you? I don't quite have the imagination Christopher does. Uh, but maybe I can teach him some little wire work techniques. Okay, so we're just going to trim off all these tails. As you can see, I do leave, what, about mm, just under a centimetre. Um, if you want to make sure that these twists are nice and secure, you can just neaten up a couple of those. Now you've got the beads in the way. I obviously twisted that one the other way. Now you've got the beads in the way, it will be much easier to make them nice and neat because you've got that finish with the beads. Leaving, again, ju just under a centimetre. You only need a few mil, but it's enough that it's gonna hold all of those beads on. So don't, don't do it so short that you're not gonna have anything there. Uh, flat nose pliers, bending that over, bending it over. Remember, you know the top and the bottom because the back side, you can see all of these wire workings. Front side, you've got the nice neat finish. Um, and like I said, you can use these for brooches. You can use them for your wreaths, your garlands, your decorations. I'm just going to cut that stem as well. Man, these pliers are shot to pieces. Okay, little sharpie points. If you're gonna start wearing them, just be aware, like with your wire on the base here, where I've cut it, just take your flat nose pliers and just give it a little pincy pince and a twist, okay? And by doing that, you're just gonna hide all of those sharper pieces, like so. And then the fun part, the shaping. So you've got that lovely shape. I'm gonna neaten it all up. So I'm taking the leaf itself and I'm pinching it and almost folding it in. And then these bits, I'm gonna raise it up with my finger. So I'm raising and just pushing in and that will accentuate those lovely spokes on the outside. Same on the other side, raising them up. And the moulding and the shaping is where you are really going to get it to come to life. So take your time with it, get it perfect. And you will have a lovely holly shape. Can I bring those ones in a little bit more? There we go. Oh, that's a good holly. Okay, so we're going to bring both of them together. In fact, this one looks a bit rubbish now compared. So let's really bring that in. 
I like them when they are quite tight and quite small because you want that dimension. So you can kind of, sorry, squeeze the bottom, squeeze the top. Pretty. Okay, um, berries. We need the berries. So I've got some lovely red beads. Remember, if you are going for your kits, uh, you will get your red beads for your holly. You're going to get your white beads for tomorrow's mistletoe. You will also get two colours of your green, um, olive and something um, are the actual colours. Um, I'll show you the difference between the two in a minute. Right, so I'm just taking an extra piece of wire, like so. And I'm going to add on my berries. I like to do them as individual elements so I'm going to cut this into three I'm going to go for three remember those odd numbers that you should always go with I'm going to pop the berry onto the wire into the very middle and then I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to pinch it underneath to give me that lovely flush stem and then I'm going to give it a twist don't over twist because you'll break the wire that's enough let's do that one and then this one. So either hole, either side of the holes. Pinch it in to give you that finish. Holding the stem and twisting the bead. Olive and Peridot, thank you, Camille. God, you guys keep me right, don't you? Uh, question, how many leaves will it make? Uh, 20 sprigs. So that's your 40 leaves. Uh, so plenty, plenty for all those lovely decorations. Okay, and there are our berries. Now, you can bring all three of these together. I prefer to do them as individual berries because I just feel like I can, I can get a nicer cluster um, than with them all being individual. So I'm going to wrap all of that together and that's going to give me my holly berries. And then we're going to bring it all together. So popping these in here, I want them all to sit just like that. And then I'm going to bring it all together in my hand. And because my stems for my berries are a little bit short, I'm going to hold it with my flat nose pliers and I'm just twisting, twisting. You can see that I've cupped my hand. So now I've just spent five minutes faffing around with that shape. I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to bring it in. and twist it round. And then I'm just going to bring those berries to the front. Twist it over a little bit. So cute. I absolutely love doing these. I do love Christmas anyway, but when we can start making little decorations like these, I love it. So I'm quite excited to do my wreath behind my head, but I haven't got time yet get there okay so you're also going to get your floristry tape now your floristry tape is going to make everything again just nice and realistic and a nice little finish you're going to take your tape now this is a slightly different one to what you have in your kits I'm afraid uh, but it's just the one that I can lay my hand to the concept is the same I'm just going to bind all of the stems together so I start at the front so that I've got that lovely little tab that will go around the back and then holding it so that you are traveling down let's get rid of some of these sharper bits first safety first peeps get rid of them bringing it down so i am holding it ever so slightly at an angle and that will bring it down so by holding it at that angle i'm limiting the amount of tape that i use because if you hold it straight and you just keep binding and binding and binding it's just going to get thicker, um, which isn't a good look. Um, so I'm going to finish that off there. And bring it down and twist it together. Like so. And there I've got my lovely sprig. Now, you can, like I said, attach these onto wire. Um, sorry, you can wire wrap them onto a brooch to have them as a brooch. You could use this and create a little loop up at the top and attach it onto 
an ear wire if you really want it. Um, you could obviously put it on to... Um, you could put it onto um, a hairband, a hair clip, anything like that. Um, or, of course, as I will do, you can take these, you can put a little loop in them, like so, and that then makes it a tree decoration. You can wire wrap this bit around just to finish it off. And that will then give you a lovely, neat and attachable finish we'll just trim that little bit of extra wire off and that way you could add it on to all sorts and um, to put it onto a wire brooch let's undo this bit I would cut my stem quite small about here and your wire brooch is going to have to come up the back of one of your holly leaves so you can then just take your wire and wrap it around the very center you could add your brooch on before you combine the whole sprig so, for example, when you are here, and I had a brooch to show you, um, which has now completely disappeared, um, but um, what can I use? I would put your brooch back along the back here, take some excess wire, I can't even cut that bit off. Take some extra wire and wrap it onto these. So take those three out, take those three, and take those three. And then just go through the middle and wrap it around, around the middle of your leaf and around the brooch back. And then once you've done all of that, you can then shape this, cut this down and then shape it. And that will give you um, a lovely little brooch. Napkin ring, Shirley. That's a great idea. Brilliant idea. Um, so there you go. There are your holly sprigs. Um, there are so many different uses for them. I think they look absolutely adorable. And of course, you've made them. Um, if you want to add something extra to your gift wrapping, of course, you can put them on gift wrapping and then it's a detachable present for somebody, a tree decoration. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be doing the mistletoe. So you can see the difference in the colour of the leaves as well. Um, mistletoe sprigs that you can use for all sorts. And of course you can combine them all into one huge big kissing sprig to put on your door. Although no kissing this year, is there gonna be? <laughs> um, but they're gonna make fabulous little decorations that of course you can dot around your home um, and again, you've made them, so it's even more special. Um, okay, we've got 10 minutes before the silence. We did it. I wanted to make sure that anyone who wanted to partake in the two-minute silence at 11 o'clock, of course, could. Um, sorry I missed out on your comments. I couldn't type this morning. Facebook playing up. Been in and out four times. Finally working now. Great tutorial. Help me solve the problems I've had with this. Fabulous. That's what I'm here to do. Um, I hope you um, are all staying safe. I hope you're all okay. We are here for you for anything that you need. Um, thank you, says Dino. Thank you for popping in. Uh, homemade crackers. They'd be amazing. Uh, they're so stunning. I love it. I'll definitely try this. Thanks, Sarah. Happy Sunday to you all. Indeed. Um, Shirley, please, is there still room for Thursday morning to sign up? If so, where do I do it? Yes, Shirley, um, although it's it's Thursday evening or Friday morning. So uh, very quickly, we've got 10 minutes, so I'll talk for two. Um, bead club. So we have launched at Totally Beads, uh, we have launched um, a bead club. You can either come in and join us um, and pay for per session, per class, um, or you can sign up and have your monthly subscription, which will get you into all of them. That will also, as a member, as a subscription member, will also get you into the Facebook groups that we have for a Thursday night or a Friday morning. There's a playback facility. Of course, you can um, ask lots of questions in there. Um, so you are part of that club. Um, Beadclub.co.uk is where you will go and sign up. Um, now, we do have a lot of members um, and it is um, once once that space is full. So on our Thursday night and Friday morning, we are limiting the numbers because we don't want it to be too overwhelming. The whole reason of us doing this online is because Kitty used to run a bee club every Thursday night. 
and she'd have some lovely ladies and gentlemen come in um, and sit around the table. It was quite um, led by our members as well. If ever there was a project that you were dying to do, uh, then we can add that onto our lists as well. So it's a very personal club. Um, but of course we can't do it. So everything is now done online, which does mean we had on Thursday, we had a lady from Texas. On Friday, we had a lady, oh, I can't remember where she said she was from. So we're on the beautiful coast in America. Um, we have um, international groups, which of course is amazing. Um, so beadclub.co.uk, thank you. Simon has put the link on there as well. Um, so you can go and have a little look. Now those spaces are limited and we are almost full on Thursday night. Um, so if you do want to sign up um, for each class, uh, you will need to do that um, in advance because of course our members who um, pay for the entire month's worth of classes uh, will get the first places, okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, but we had we had a great time. It was it was great fun. Um, so yes, thank you. Um, we missed the bead club, so this is the next best thing. Exactly, Brenda. And it was so lovely to see everybody. Um, finally, put some uh, faces to the names that we've seen on here for um, the majority of the year. Um, I feel like I've got to know you all, but I don't know what you look like. And it's rubbish just talking to myself. So it was so nice to have that interaction. And then, of course, when people get stuck, they're going, oh, Kitty, what have I done? This is how much I've done. I'm stuck on this bit. I can't remember. Um, so it's a very interactive group as well. We can see you. You can see us. If you don't want to have your camera on, you don't have to. You can be um, a little bit anonymous in that group as well. Um, we had a great bead club when my son Barry Short had his shop. Carolyn Short used to come and give tutorials. Amazing, Sharon. Yes, I forgot that Barry is your son. Um, absolutely love Barry. Haven't seen him for a long, long time. And Carolyn was the one who taught me to make jewellery. I don't know, about 18 years ago. Um, used to teach me some of her little kits. And then off I would go to Hobbycraft and sit in the corner of a shop for a weekend demonstrating. Goodness me. Crazy times. Um... Oh, Lucy says, perfect sense, got a little scared, but we will defo join in next week. Yeah, you can always, you can mute yourself, you can have your camera off, you can just sit and bead away in the comfort of your own home, but you can see everything that is going on. Um, we had lots of interaction though, so it's really lovely. And of course that community will grow as we go on. Okay, guys, so I will see you tomorrow morning. I have to go now because we've got five minutes until the silence, so we can go and, uh, we can go and do that without rabbiting onto me. Um... I will see you all in the morning. Kitty's got a busy old day planned tomorrow, finishing off some new stuff. Um, so you will see me at 10 o'clock. I will be here uh, doing the mistletoe, so the second part of this. Uh, will we have the list to order in time for the class, please? Yes, um, you will end up, so um, this month has been a little bit crazy, uh, as will probably December, but uh, going forward, and it's also why we've done discounted classes for November and December, because it is all a learning curve. Uh, come January, the price will go up up once we are fine-tuned and a well-oiled machine um but for now yes you will get a, a, about a month in advance um and of course we do international shipping so you'll get all your materials in time um okay love to you all stay safe um go and have your little um silence for remembrance sunday um stay safe wherever you are look after yourself and i will see you tomorrow morning love to you all see you soon take care bye